Dear students, in this video, we are going to see the theme, structure and poetic devices used in the poem, All the Worlds a Stage by William Shakespeare. It is a monologue spoken by Jax in the play As You Like It, written by William Shakespeare. In it, he compares the world to a stage and life to a play and catalogues the seven stages of a man's life. The poet has explored the themes of time, aging, memory and purpose of life. It is a blank verse. The poet has not followed any rhyme scheme in this poem. Now let us see the various poetic devices used. The whole poem is in itself a symbolism where the poet has made use of various symbols to represent ideas or qualities. The title itself has the poetic device metaphor. Metaphor is the comparison of two different things for the sake of comparison or symbolism. In the first line, all the words are stage. The world is compared to a stage, hence it is metaphor. In the next line, the men and women are compared to the players who act on the stage, hence metaphor. In the third line, exits refer to the death of a man and entrances refer to the birth of a man. Hence here also metaphor is used. And one man in his time plays many parts. Parts refer to the different characters a man plays in his life. And the time refers to the lifetime. Hence metaphor is used. Seeking the bubble reputation. Here a soldier seeks the bubble reputation. Which means that the reputation which is short lived like a bubble. Hence metaphor is used. His youthful host. Host means fans. The size of the fan has become so big that it is like a world too wide, hence compared, metaphor is used. For his shrunk shank, shank refers to a piece of meat that is cut from a leg of an animal. But here the man's leg is compared, which is narrower with the age, hence comparison is done. The figure of speech is metaphor. Turning again toward childish treble pipes, here the voice is compared to the musical notes, hence comparison. The figure of speech is metaphor. Now let us see epithet. Epithet is a word or phrase which describes the main quality of someone or something and usually they are the adjectives that describes a noun. Winning schoolboy. Winning is the characteristic of the schoolboy that is expressing his unhappiness. Hence the word schoolboy is described using the word winning. Hence it is epithet. Shining morning face. Here the face of the boy is described using the word shining and morning, hence epithet. Strange oaths. Here the oaths of the soldier is strange. The noun oath is described using the word strange, hence epithet. Round belly. The belly of the justice is described using the word round, hence epithet. Wise saw. Saws here refers to the old sayings which are wise, hence epithet. And modern instances. Instances are the Examples which are of the modern age, hence it is described using the word modern, the figure of speech is epithet. Shrunk shank, shank refers to the leg piece of an animal, here it refers to the man's but which has shrunk. So shank is described using the word shrunk, hence epithet. Strange eventful history, here the life of the man that is history is described using the word strange and eventful, hence it is epithet. Now let us see transferred epithet. A modifier usually an adjective qualifies a noun other than the person or thing it is actually describing. Woeful ballad. Ballad refers to a slow sentimental song which is woeful that is unhappy song. Actually the songs are not unhappy but the man here is unhappy. So the quality of the word gets transferred hence it is transferred epithet. Lean and slippered pantalon. Pantalon refers to the Trousers that are gathered at the ankles and generally it is worn by the woman. Here pantaloon is described using the word lean and slippered. Actually it is not the pantaloon that is lean and slippered. Instead it is the man who has become lean and is wearing a slipper. Hence transferred epithet. Youthful hose. Pants are not youthful. Instead the man who wears this pant is youthful. Hence the quality is getting transferred. So the figure of speech is transferred epithet. Onomatopoeia, it is the use of a word that phonetically imitates, resembles and suggests the sound that it describes. So in the line mewling and puking in the nurse's arms, here the word mewling refers to the weak noise that is made by a cat. 
here the child's cry is mentioned as mewling so the sound hence it is onomatopoeia and then the winning school boy here winning refers to the sound that is made by the unhappy boy expressing his unhappiness hence it is onomatopoeia in the line sighing like furnace sighing actually refers to emitting a long deep audible breath expressing sadness here since the breathing is audible so the sound is heard hence the figure of speech is onomatopoeia turning again toward childish treble pipes and whistles treble pipes and whistles all refer to the sounds that is created at the old age hence it is onomatopoeia euphemism it is the use of a polite alternate word in the place of harsh or unpleasant words or phrases so in the line is second childishness and near oblivion old age is compared to second childishness and it is uttered in a polite way that is second childishness instead of old age hence the figure of speech used here is euphemism hyperbole it is an exaggerated statement not meant to be taken literally so in the line mewling and puking in the nurse's song here the poet mentions that at the first stage the infant is crying and vomiting in the nurse's arm which doesn't mean that the child is only crying and vomiting so there is an exaggeration hence it is hyperbole even in the canon's mouth so a soldier with the aim to seek bubble reputation is ready to stand in front of the canon's mouth which is also an exaggeration hence the figure of speech is hyperbole synecdoche synecdoche is a figure of speech where a part is made to represent the whole or the whole is made to represent a part so here in the line made to his mistress eyebrow the ballad is not written only on the mistress eyebrow it refers to the whole mistress hence it is synecdoche contrast contrast often means opposites and it is the opposition of two objects used to emphasize the difference between two people places or things in the line full of wise saws and modern instances wise saws refers to the olden sayings whereas the modern instances refers to the new examples so there is a contrast made in between the olden sayings and the modern examples hence the figure of speech is contrast personification is attributing the human characteristics to the two innate objects or animals in the line and so he plays his part the sixth age shifts into the lean actually the man only becomes lean so here sixth age is personified as a human being hence the figure of speech is personification repetition it is a word or phrase that is often repeated to put emphasis so in the last line sans teeth sans eyes sans taste sans everything the word sans which means that without has been repeated to put an emphasis hence the figure of speech is repetition anaphora it is a repetition of a word or expression at the beginning of successive phrases clauses sentences or verses here in the lines and then the winning school boy with his satchel and shining morning face sleeping like snail both the lines begin with the word and hence the figure of speech is anaphora now let us see the words of alliteration it is the occurrence of the same letter or sound at the beginning of adjacent or closely connected words with consonant sounds so here you can see plays and parts are alliterated words school boy satchel alliterated words shining snail alliterated words with vocal or alliterated words made mistress are alliterated words quick quarrel are alliterated words place part are alliterated words sixth shifts alliterated words spectacles side are alliterated words well world wide alliterated words shrunk shank are alliterated words turning toward are alliterated words sound seen are alliterated words teeth taste are alliterated words now let us quickly see the lines of sesura sesura is a break in line where the reader pauses usually through punctuation when there is a punctuation in between a line the figure of speech is called as sesura nearly 15 lines of this poem the poet has used cesura his acts being seven ages full stop at first the infant so here cesura is used the next line you can see and then the winning school by kama with his satchel in the line and shining morning face there's a kama creeping like snail unwilling to school full stop and then the lover sighing like furnace kama with a vocal ballad made to his mistress eyebrow full stop then a soldier full of strange jokes kama and bearded like the pard jealous in honor kama sudden and quick in quarrel even in the cannon's mouth full stop and then the justice 
and so he plays his part full stop the sixth age shifts his youthful hosts comma well saved a world too wide for his shrunk shank semicolon and his big manly face turning again to a childish treble comma fights and whistles in his sound full stop last of all scene and in the last line where there are more than two punctuations in the line here in all these lines cesura is used enjambment enjambment is when a line runs on into the next line without any stop or pause at the end maintaining the sense here you can see in this line at the end of this line with this satchel there is no punctuation and it runs into the next line then in the line and shining morning face come up creeping like snail after snail there is no punctuation and runs into the next line sighing like furnace with a woeful ballad there is no punctuation seeking the bubble reputation at the end there is no punctuation and so he plays his part the six stage shifts there is no punctuation his youthful host well saved a world too wide there is no punctuation turning again toward childish treble fights after fights there is no punctuation hence in all these lines enjambment is used dear students i hope you all have understood all the figure of speech used in this poem subscribe to get new updates and also watch all my videos if you like this video do click the like button and share it with your friends thank you happy learning